All right, guys, welcome back to part two of this series on this uh, front axle hub shaft. And in this part, we're going to start with taking this backing plate off. And I believe all we need to do is take the four nuts off that's located inside this ring here. And they are nine sixteenths. <laughs> So here's your spindle, and if you want to take this off, you just take something, pop it loose, slide it out. And there's a uh, gasket behind here. Now to get the half shaft out, you want to take the upper and lower ball joints off, and just pull in, in this tie rod, and also the steering arm, steering link, and you can pull that off. Now I'm not going to go that far with it. I can tell just by feeling that that U joint. It looks pretty good. It feels pretty tight. The ball joints, the joker's tight as crap, so no worries there. Uh, we're just going to clean this up a little bit. I don't even want to take this spindle off. I am going to take this, this off and I'm going to clean it up real good and uh, paint it. I'll probably go out there and sandblast with my little blaster and get it ready to paint. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is, is go out there and sandblast and get some primer sprayed on this back back and plate here. A lot of times this little sheet metal part right here will get damaged. You can see it bent a little bit. We'll straighten that back out and just hit it. You can see it's bent here, it's bent there. Take your hammer and tap it back out. We'll uh, sandblast it good, and then we'll go paint it. So, we'll be right back. Could have got it all the way off, but it just took a lot more time. And uh, what I'm gonna do right now is straighten out these bent areas. Try to. right here bent up. Spot welds right here looks like that and crack. Not that it's really gonna hurt but that's fine. 
That spot will crack right there. I might go back and tack this in. All right, now we're ready to knock out these lugs. Uh, so I'm gonna take a lug nut. And really, I need to turn this thing around because I'm right-handed. calling it a damn drum but it's a rotor. Alright, so next we need to get this seal out, this hall seal. Somebody's put it way down in there. It's not really where it needs to be. Should have been flush. It's way in there. Shouldn't have been that hard to get out, but somebody over installed that one. That's to give us access to our our rear bearing. And like I said, I'm not keeping these bearings, so into the trash it goes. It probably be alright, you know, I don't know it. Now one of these bearings comes with a race and one of them does not. I believe it's the back one does not come with a, a race. But we want to take it and put it in our parts washer now and clean out the inside real good. I'm going to take a 
rag and get in here good and then wash it out good and I got to move some junk and get over to it. Alright, with it out of the parts washer, or the rinsed out with some water, and now we're ready to get our bearings ready. <clears throat> LM104949, I believe, is the back bearing. It does not come with a race. Alright. The seal number is Tempkin471271. And the front set is set 45. And that's pretty much any manufacturer, Tempkin just being one of them, set 45 is going to be the front set. It does come with a race and a bearing. They're matched. So we need to replace the race that's in here. So first thing we've got to do is drive the old race out. You can get to it from the back side. Just get a punch or a screwdriver hit around the edges and drive it out. Big cheap screwdriver. Screwdriver will work the best. You can find one that's got a handle that won't fall all to pieces with you. save it. It don't look don't look in bad shape though but since this is a match set we don't need it. Now let me dry out this inside of this thing a little bit. I should have blow some compressed air in there. But see that race Driving the new one in, of course, is a little bit more tricky than driving the old one out. You know, they say do not move a new bearing dry. You don't have a whole lot of room to knock on going in with it. I'm try to get it straight. I wish I had a bearing driver it will sit in there you just have to be real gentle you could really take an old one you know and possibly drive it with it might be an option we'll see Looks like it's seated. And it works pretty good. So save the old one, turn it over, and then you can hit around this and use this to drive the new one in. Alright, so next we're gonna take our big one and pack it full of grease. There again, we don't wanna we don't wanna spin it. We want to clean our hands as good as we can get them. I can't put new gloves on because my hands are sweaty and I never get them on. So I'm just going to clean these up. And we'll get us some fresh new premium high temp wheel bearing grease. And I was expecting this to be red but it's uh, kind of a gold color. 
Alright, so what I'm going to do is just get, I don't know if y'all can even see what I'm doing here. Right, I'm going to grab me a little scoop up with my bearing. And I'm going to put it in the palm of my hand. Let's see where I can get you in here. Okay. And just work it in. should see it come out the top of the bearing like that. And you just work it in all the way around so it's all the way through the bearing. This is some sticky grease. It's almost the consistency of uh, thin peanut butter. I'm sure most of y'all that's watched the, my videos have seen either done this yourself or have seen me do it in another video. But just in case, this is not a hard job. It's just a messy job. That's why you want to have some good gloves on. Basically, using your hand as a hydraulic pump, forcing the grease between the rotor bearings. So we got it all the way around, just to make sure I'm going to go ahead and push this on up in there a little bit, there it goes. And then, I'm going to take me a big goop of it, go around the inside. Some sticky stuff. All we need to do now is install our seal and she'll be ready to go back. We're gonna wait, we'll have to wait till we get we'll have to wait till we get ready to install it on the spindle before we put our little bearing back in there. But we we'll go ahead and get our seal in here so that this big bearing don't fall out. Of course, the cell's got a spring in it. Y'all can see maybe. Maybe y'all can see that spring in here. The spring goes to the inside, so it's going to be flat on the outside. Like that. And we'll just take a little rubber mallet or something. Sideways. I'm gonna drop my bearing in the floor. And that's all you need. You don't need to recess this seal all the way to the bearing. There's really no need in it. Alright guys, so thanks for watching part two. Stay tuned for part three where we uh, get everything back together hopefully. Till then, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't.